Hello everyone, welcome to Thursday 19th edition of Living Life. You know, out here in California, especially during the summertime, uh, many of us and many churches go out to summer missions. And usually uh, there is, most many churches go to uh, Mexico because it's very close to California, especially here. And so uh, we go to Mexico, and I've been to Mexico, different parts of Mexico for missions uh, for many, many years. I, I particularly remember this one year we went to this area called Veracruz, Mexico. Um, it's uh, really far down towards the Caribbean area of uh, Mexico and up in the mountains. Um, and in the summertime, it's just hot. It's just very, very hot place. Um, it's humid. Uh, it's dusty. Um, everything about it is, for a city person, not so attractive. Um, however, this is uh, where we went, and we went to go build a bathroom um, for this church. And we used to, we were laboring hard all day. We were building this bathroom for the small little church and putting a smile on our face, but dust is going up, you know, plastic pieces everywhere. You're all dusty. You're dark by the end of the day. And, you know, it's humid, so you're just really smelly. You know, everyone's smelly. I know even the ladies, I, I saw them, they try to cover up their smell by putting perfume on. It didn't help. It was like perfume and sweat smell at the same time. It really didn't help. The saving grace of that of that relationship is at the end of the day when you go and jump in this clean creek this river and you take this major shower and you get cleansed well in a similar fashion uh, the people of Israel were very dirty and the Lord is trying to give them grace to be sanctified and cleansed in today's text let's take a look Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord, who has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. Is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? Now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. The angel said to those who were standing before him, Take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, See, I have taken away your sin, and I will put rich garments on you. Then I said, Put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel of the Lord stood by. The angel of the Lord gave this charge to Joshua. This is what the Lord Almighty says. If you will walk in my ways and keep my requirements, then you will govern my house and have charge of my courts, and I will give you a place among these standing here. Listen, O high priest Joshua and your associates seated before you, who are men symbolic of things to come. I am going to bring my servant the branch. See, the stone I have set in front of Joshua. There are seven eyes on that one stone, and I will engrave an inscription on it, says the Lord Almighty. And I will remove the sin of this land in a single day. In that day, each of you will invite his neighbor to sit under his vine and fig tree, declares the Lord Almighty. In today's uh, chapter, Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, God is continuing the process of purification for the people of Israel. And he starts off, though, uh, with a vision. And the vision is this, uh, that he shows Zechariah, Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And, and right next to Joshua is Satan. The devil is right in this vision. And it's, he is on the right-hand side. The, Satan is on the right-hand side. Um, and he is accusing um, Joshua, the high priest, of his sin. And he is just letting him have it. You know, um, I don't know if, if you experience this sometimes, um, you know, as human beings and as Christians, uh, you know, we always try to strive for the things of Christ, don't we? You know, we want to be holy. <laughs> You know, that's, that's at the bottom of our hearts. We want to be like Christ. We want to do His will. But um, isn't it 
increasingly difficult, especially as we are facing this modern world. Uh, there's so many things that are not of God bombarding us, um, fighting for our hearts and our attention and our time, right? I mean, it's happening. There's a war that is going on for our hearts and our spirit right now as we speak. There is a war, and the devil is constantly trying to take us uh, towards his side. And every time that we fail, and sometimes we think like, oh man, i got to return to God. He is right there accusing us, trying to keep us down. How many of you guys are in that kind of situation, even as we speak? You know, um, our flesh is weak. That's, our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. Um, that's why all the more we need to pray and all the more we need to worship and, and be in our spiritual disciplines. But uh, the, the reality is that as uh, long as we are here on this earth, we have to deal with this thing called our flesh. And it's a huge battle. And the devil is just constantly trying to keep us down. How many of you guys out there, um, in, you know, because I face this all the time, feel depressed or feel like, oh, man, there's no way God will forgive me. I mean, I'm just constantly doing the sin over and over again. How could God possibly forgive me? Um, man, there's, there's no way I could be a son or a daughter of God. I mean, I'm, I'm just not doing the things that God has called me to do. There's so many things in our minds, and Satan is trying to accuse us and make us feel guilty, giving us, giving us the guilt trip. He is the accuser. accuser. And oftentimes, because of all these, all these uh, pressures and all these things that are coming upon us to be a certain way, uh, we just say, oh, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to go to church, or I don't want to pretend. Um, Satan is the accuser, and he's right there. However, you know the, the grace of the message of the gospel, the grace of God, it always pours through. No matter how difficult your life may be and how steeped in sin you may be, brothers and sisters, and how much you are being accused of the devil or even you accuse yourself, no matter how much and how deep you are in that, God says this. He says, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord rebuke it. This is my son, this is my daughter, and you will not touch them. And ultimately, I will give grace to my son and my daughter. God is there to protect you. God is there to lift you of your guilt. God is there not to accuse you, but to cover you. And He desires to do that. He desires, you to, desires to bring you into His arms. And He desires ultimately to cleanse you. Isn't that awesome? To give you a refreshed feeling of getting, just scrubbing yourself with soap and diving into that fresh, clean creek to get all that filth just washed away through the blood of Jesus. Amen. The Lord desires to give you new garment, it says. It says that He's going to have you take off your filthy clothes and He's going to take away your sins and even put fine garments on you. He's going to put that clean, beautiful white garment on you and give you a refreshed feeling because that's exactly what great, uh, the Lord desires upon His sons and daughters as He places His grace, His mercy, His forgiveness, and His blessing upon you. He desires to put the fresh set of spirit, heart, mind, clothing, he even caps it off with a beautiful turban. That dirty turban that was filled with sweat and all that. He wants to take that out. He wants to cleanse you and put a new turban on. Oh, how amazing is the grace of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. And He desires to bring that kind of refreshment upon you. God will have it no other way. Would you go to Him on that? Would you desire that? Do you want that? If you do, let's go to Him and let's receive that refreshment in the way that only God can do because He doesn't condemn you. He wants to bring you into His arms and He wants to refresh you.
So I talked about the Lord desiring to refresh the people of God. You know, some of you guys need that refreshment right now. You guys feel heavy with burden of sin. You guys feel filthy, some of you guys. And you guys just need to be cleansed, some of us. Um, sometimes even myself, I come into those circumstances where I know that I am filthy and I need to return to Jesus. How? The question is how? The question is how? I want to challenge you here. You know, I remember this story uh, in Psalm 51. David, um, he commits adultery with Bathsheba. And man, he just wants to continue to deny his fault. Deny, and he, not only does he commit adultery, he commits uh, murder, all these things. He wants to constantly. And how, in the end, what did he have to do? He had to come into a time of true, deep repentance. You know, repentance is something that I don't think a lot of Christians do. Um, but it's absolutely necessary. Repentance means really going through um, in your mind what you have done wrong before God. Really thinking that through. Feeling sorrow in your heart, but not stopping there. But finding a place and a space where you can cry out, cry out to God, cry out to God. Say, Jesus, I need you to come and cleanse me. Sorry for the things that I have done and really cry out. I guarantee you, you do that and you connect with God. I guarantee you, you will feel refreshed. You will feel absolutely cleansed from head all the way down to the toes. It is a true repentant heart that God desires and I want to challenge each and every one of us today as we are listening to this program. If there's anyone here that needs to repent and receive new clothing and new freshness and a new forgiveness, I challenge each and every one of you guys to run to the altar and cry out to Jesus in repentance. So with that, Lord, I thank you for the message that you are giving us today and the challenge to repent. Lord, there are so many things in our lives where we just need to tear that away from us because it is impure and it is not holy and it is not of your ways. Jesus, would you help us, Lord, today? Help us to come to you. Think of these things, Lord God, deeply and come to you in repentance and cry out to you. And we ask, Lord God, as we do, Lord, that you would refresh us, that you would cleanse us, and that you would put a new clothing upon us, Lord, that we may experience the goodness of forgiveness and salvation that you always promised to us, uh, that we uh, have, Lord, as children of God. We thank you for this message, and we pray, Lord Jesus, for your refreshment upon our people today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.